What's going on, Philadelphia? Ten and one, and I can't feel great about it. What's going on, Bird Brains? I'm John Barchard, Vince Quinn, Taylor Cordatis. You've been uh, joining uh, the live stream. Uh, again, we appreciate you being here. As always, willing to take your questions and comments. 40 to 33. The Eagles break an all-time record once again uh, for rushing 353 yards on the ground. I feel like that always happens against the Packers. There's like a, a something that always comes up. Uh, has not happened since 1948, which, yes, Chuck Begnerick was still a student at the University of Penn when that happened. So uh, that's how long ago it was. Um, I want to say dominating. I was literally just telling Vince Quinn on a live stream. Was that dominating? No. <laughs> was that exciting? Yes. Was it fun in some parts? Absolutely. Is Jalen Hurts an absolute baller? Fuck yes, he is. Other than that, what a, what a, a again, it's the same Eagles team of a lot of hot heat, a lot of dumb mistakes. Jonathan Gannon having an oopsie daisy. And yes, you said it, Jordan Love probably starting for the rest of the year <laughs> and he looked a lot better than the last time I saw him so uh we've got a lot to go through including Reed Blankenship and his bloody nose and the, did a bunch of other stuff but uh, what were your media takeaways from this one yeah Jalen on the ground fucking rules it, it was the basis for everything I mean Jalen's legs early first drive of the game he was a master at it and it happened all throughout he had 100 yards through the first quarter Unreal. So, yeah, Shane Steichen, you can take me out to lunch any fucking time. All right? <laughs> Give me a call. Find hot, me. Hot let me know. Right here at the gatehouse. I will meet you for a burger. It will be great. But that's what it takes. Like, that's what makes this team ultimately good at its foundation. The bedrock of this team is running the ball. It should be Miles Sanders uh, first. In terms of the yardage, it was. He had a great night. It is part of that 353 or whatever the total was. Uh, Jalen was right there. Jalen almost set a single game all-time NFL record for quarterback rushing yardage. He was about 20 yards short, I know, because I was tracking it to both of your annoyances all throughout the fourth <laughs> quarter. But uh, that... That's what it takes for this team right now because the passing offense, as it's constructed, is not exactly constructed. It's it's a lot of things that kind of happen in spurts here and there. Uh, there's, there's never, like, got to have it automatic things that they do. There's not real regu regularity to it. So the running game is the most basic thing that sets up all that other stuff to exist and function. Jalen was great tonight. Yeah, I, I thought he was pretty damn outstanding. Um 7.4 yards per carry on the ground, no matter who is touching it. 49 uh, total rushes, and I'm sorry, I said 53. It's actually 63 in total, 363 yards. Um, to me, that just says, like, that's the offensive line dominating, and why don't you have your passing game figured out? You scored 40 points, and we've got uh, Kelsey and uh, Jalen Hurts getting some screen time here, getting game balls from uh, Sunday Night Football. Uh, it makes sense to me. Yeah, that, uh, two representatives that uh, pretty much controlled this game all along. But, you know, this is the third or fourth week in the row for the offense where Defonte Smith, I still think, had a pretty good game. A.J. Brown still has a pretty good game, even with a ridiculous fumble, but still has a, a touchdown in the end. Quest Watkins gets another touchdown in here. So it's not like the passing game is broken. It's not like it's awful. I think Jair Alexander gave him fits early. The secondary is very good here. Uh, they didn't want to seem to run the football uh, <laughs> a ton outside of those designed runs. And when, you know, Jalen uh, gets 100 of those yards, it's kind of hard, hard to go away from that altogether. But uh, I don't know. Is it how these defenses are playing them? Or is this just this is the best we're going to see out of this Eagles passing game, more or less, well, when, this without is, Dallas Goddard. Well, this is where it's been. It's it's a question of evolution and how much it changes, right? Like, that was that was the literally the first thing in my notes because it's the first offensive play of the game. They went five wide. Yep. And I go, all right, this is good. Like, give me more of this. Try more of this. Four wide receivers, five wide receivers, however you want to structure it, tight ends. I, I don't care. Spread the field out a little bit. They don't do that. They don't try to do that. It was nice to see them do that, at least at the very beginning of the game. They had a couple other moments where they might, might have had four wide, but it wasn't all that often. I'd like to see more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, like Jalen, for, for all the things we talk about with good decision-making, 
he usually makes very good decisions with where he's throwing the football to. So it's not like he's throwing into double coverage all the time. You know what I mean? He just he usually has a good read on things, although he did get Devontae Smith killed uh, on this one play where he got hit by Jair Alexander, that, and it was not a great ball. But, but overall, he makes really good decisions just in general, so give him more opportunities to do that. I don't know why they don't. But other things that do help, and, and this isn't necessarily the passing game, although it was on one play, Cam Jurgens was out there next to Jordan Mailata at tackle. So he's yep. out at tackle uh, as an extra tackle. They had some of the other tight ends out there, so that's one of their answers to Dallas Goddard. They tried a shot play that didn't work, and Jalen ran for like 30 yards on that. That was and, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable legs there, yeah. So so he had that, and then there was another play when they had Cam Jurgens in at the goal line, and that ended up being a rushing touchdown. So, like, those are good things. It's it's encouraging. Try something new. like they Because I think this is one of the – the spots that we've been in between the two of us, I don't know how much we've really talked about this, but for all the gripes that we have with the coaching staff, they are still young guys. They like, are. They, they have not had a lot of experience or time. They are learning on the job. You are going to get better year one to year two, year two to year three, year three to year four, ideally. Uh, so if they're those kinds of guys and they are good students of the game and whatever, then hopefully th this kind of moment should make you better. That's the whole point. You don't have the things that you need. So how do you make it work? What do you learn? What do you try? What do you adapt to? And it, we got some signs of that. Yeah, and, and I don't think this is going to be like... I, I know what's going to happen here because it's so glaring. I mean, Jalen Hurts now becomes the fourth player in of, of all time in the NFL to rush for 150 and throw for 150 plus. Like, that, that's that's going to get carried on for a long time. You coming into this week, we're saying this is what you got to go and do. Jalen Hurts is the thermostat. This is how this offense runs. Ah, there's there's Jeff Stoutland, his beautiful smiley face, and there's the Eagles running the football. This is what Philadelphia craves and loves. But that's what you're supposed to do against the Packers. That's what everyone has done against the Packers since Aaron Rodgers has been a quarterback, it feels like. Well, what are you going to do? Well, you can't get into a shot-for-shot -shot race with Aaron Rodgers, so you might as well run the football against him and control the clock and all that crap. And they did it beautifully. Miles Sanders, too. What did he finish with? Some absurd number. Uh, 21 carries, 143 yards. Two touchdowns on the day. Oh, so he outran uh, Jalen, or Jalen outran him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and that is always going to happen early, too. Especially when Jalen gets hot early, you know Miles is coming right back from that. If that ends up being a formula and that's what you got to go and win football games, that's great. But I wouldn't get too carried away from this one. Like, this is what won this one. This is what you're supposed to do. Um, it, the, I definitely didn't think the Packers were going to score anywhere near 33 points. No. So probably some Jonathan Gannon bitching here uh, uh, th and there as well. But, like, I, I don't know. I just think they did the smart thing. They came in. They they knew for the most part that this is what they were going to do. They executed it. Oh, God, except for that third and inches, fourth and inches thing, which we'll get into oh, here in a God, second, which that was is totally awful. crazy. But uh, – it just from Jalen Miles' offensive line perspective, I thought it was spectacular. Spectacular. Everything outside of that, a lot of gripes, a lot of ups and downs from that. If you wanted to – actually, let's get right into it. How in the hell can it, you get back-to-back -back sneaks that don't go for you? I, I don't think I've, I've seen that in a very long time, especially on third and inches, fourth and inches, and where they were. You're abs I would have told them to go for it there if they were on their own 25. Yes. And – did that end up killing him? No. Did well, Aaron yeah. Rodgers uh, throws an interception so, there, right? Yeah. No. So what what happened on that drive was the uh, they had that play to Watson. Uh, they they got him on a fourth and five, I think it was. Oh right. They got a yes. ball to, to Watson, so that was a fir big first down for him. Then Randall Cobb ended up getting a touchdown. Oh right. So it was actually <laughs> yeah. It was a, it was a it was a big turnaround. That was what made it uh, fourteen to three. Right. The Packers like only only Thir lead. Dude. So yeah, I think that was, it was thirteen to thirteen because they missed the extra point. Oh crap! That's right. right. <laughs> so that was yeah. That was the thirteen to thirteen moment. Uh, it or was that came later. That. But uh, regardless, Green yeah, Bay got it at the thirty-seven, if, according to my notes. Uh, so that was like the only time when you go like are you serious it's going to be one of those games and you know i could hear ben by the way thank you for coming down here uh and, and, and your friend was it tyler from all, both of you all the way from okc uh or their their parts i know ben doesn't identify with that and all that stuff but i could just hear the negativity creeping in and be like well here you go of course this typical letdown game you know like and i was i was I, to be honest with you i was pretty miserable throughout most of this i wasn't enjoying <laughs> myself there's at one point during i think while this was happening so why can't you just 
fucking, I'm so tired of like having to worry about the Packers and having to worry about the Colts. I just want to get through the playoffs and see where this team is at. And like, they came back and they answered the bell again. Like this is, it's, I wouldn't even say they shot themselves in the foot here. They just kind of, they, they fucked up a, a, a very simple thing that they, that worked out for them on fourth and two, you know, like uh, later on in the game here. So, and that was with a miraculous play from Miles Sanders. Cause it's a bad snap from Kelsey. He's holding on to the ball. Jalen has a piece of the ball, but doesn't really have the ball. Miles Sanders comes in, grabs the ball and then still gets tackled short. Like yeah. it was, it was just really chaotic after they green Bay had just made a good play on the last one where uh, the guy, I forget who it was. He came around the edge and just tackled Jalen on the right side. Back. Yep. It was great. It was a great play. So yeah, I, I mean to have that fail, that sucks. But like, here's the big credit to it is Nick Sirianni after that, he didn't question anything, man. Mm-hmm. I love that about him. Like, that was great. Cause as soon as that happened, we were talking about it during the live stream. It was process, not results, right? And and as Kelsey said, it's like 92% of the time that works. Well, you just got fucked back to back to make that 8%. That's part of it. It's how it goes. Didn't stop Sirianni. He went for it on fourth downs throughout the game, continued to believe in the sneak and short yardage situations. That's what a good coach does. Like, you, you, you have a philosophy. You have the players to execute it. You go to continue to execute it, even if it doesn't work for you at one point. So good for them with sticking with their guns there. And then some of these other guys, like, yeah, okay, AJ had the the, the fumble. But yeah, what the hell, man? I, he had a That's couple of... almost su- like carbon copy same same yeah. almost identical situation trying to do a little too much which is tough because he has the ability to do it it ends up getting popped out and and there you go other teams are certainly going to clue in for him with that the rest of the way by the way at least the next couple of weeks if i'm any team worth a damn i'm looking at that and going oh i could probably get aj brown to fumble mm-hmm. he's trying to make shit happen so something for him to be cognizant of but uh certain guys that, that contributed to this game all across the board i mean quez watkins who uh, he had a huge touchdown grab. That was a great ball by Jalen. Yeah, so now back-to-back weeks. And really, if you want to say, what was it, three weeks? I know the Washington game, he had the fumble, but he had like 80 yards in that game. I mean, Quez Watkins has really become something stable and and valuable for this team the last few weeks. So Almost had two touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. So so Quez has had some really good moments here. Uh, Credit to him. Kenny Gainwell got a lot more involved, which is the same thing for him. Last couple of weeks, you're seeing more Kenny Gainwell. Boston Scott getting involved in the return game. He's taking that job over. So like, and he and had one or two carries. So you, you're just seeing a lot of different guys that are contributing for this team, and that, that's where it needs to be. Like that's what a great team is. It's not just we have one guy we feed him the ball all the time, and if that doesn't work, we're fucked. They double covered Devonte Adams. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like it it really shouldn't be that. So it's good to see that variety. And then on the backside, defensive side, I mean Josiah. Scott, interception. It's unbelievable, um, man. He's been so great filling in. Yeah, and and again, that's what you know. Avante has been has been missed for sure, but it's been a lot less noticeable last couple of games. Yeah, th- nobody's been bitching about the slot play. He's he's done great. So Josiah Scott, he gets an interception. Darius Slay tipped the ball. It's not the interception that he wanted, but he was a part of it. So maybe that <laughs> makes him feel good. It counts, uh, right? Yeah, I hope they ask him in the post game. And then uh, who else? Oh, Reed Blankenship, man. Yeah, Reed Blankenship coming into this game because Chauncey Gardner Johnson gets hurt. We'll see what the whole situation is. Doesn't with him. sound good, by the way. I keep checking Twitter and all that stuff, and just throughout the game, it just everybody kept saying ribs. And when you go off that fast and have to sit down in the cart, you know, you hope for the best, and maybe you have to wear a, a rib flap jacket. But I would have to guess at least minimum two to four, somewhere in that range for whatever he's dealing with. There. Yeah, I, I heard you say rib flap jacket, and I'm just so fat from Thanksgiving. <laughs> My first thought was that sounds delicious. I'll uh, take a rib flap jacket. Is yeah, that, thank is that you. rib flap jacket? Barbecue. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rib Flapjacks? Yes. Uh, sign me up. But yeah, like, Reed Blankenship comes into this game. He's got an interception. He had a couple of nasty hits, too, just like coming downfield, making plays in the running game. So, uh, like to see the physicality from him as a guy that's your safety three, safety four, you know? Also thought it was a little odd that he was first up and not Kayvon Wallace. And then Reed Blankenship had to come out uh, later in the game because he got a little bloody nose there and... Then there's Kayvon, who had to go and make two big plays towards the end to make sure Jordan Love didn't score a touchdown. So, um, and, and and let's let's focus on the defense there too, because like, okay, I know it's not uh, this is not going to be popular either, but like, listen, defense went down a lot today, uh, and I still really don't understand what's going on with the defensive tackle rotation and all that, and where that kind of lies, and where we're going to blame fault and et cetera, et cetera. So. I don't know. I thought Jonathan Gannon did okay today. Not good. It's not great. And I don't think the defense played uh, that great at all. But, like, 
a lot of major mistakes. First of all, uh, not that it ended up mattering, but you switch quarterbacks. There's Jordan Love. Everyone just chosen plays back. You know, like, I didn't understand that. Uh, Christian Watson walks in because Marcus Epps, and then Reed Blankenship, you know. Yeah, he blew that one. Blew that. So, like, how much should we be talking about that? I think a lot. 33 points is unacceptable from this from this shit. That's that's when you have two turnovers. It, yeah, you have two turnovers here, two on top of that. So I I just I I don't understand it. Uh something that maybe we can get re relitigate on 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 Tuesday, but um it just seems like man, it's when it's really not firing, it is not firing on on both sides of the ball. Like it's just going like what the hell are we doing here? Well, let's you let's know? and we'll look back on this a little bit too cuz one of those things we noticed on the Reed Blankenship pick was a guy that was with him in the end zone celebrating was Nicobe Dean. Yes. So, I don't know if he actually got a couple of snaps tonight or if he was just in for that snap or if he just came off the field to celebrate with Reed Blankenship, <laughs> yeah. which should be a flag, so that's why I would figure he was on the field for the play. Um Maybe. Maybe there's some changes here. But look, Green Bay is a good running team. We knew that coming in. The Eagles have not been a good run-stopping team. If you believe the Colts thing, uh, we might have talked about this on the show. We might have not. But the, I, I just didn't think it was going to look the same. I didn't think they were going to hold Indy the way they did yeah. for three quarters last week. I didn't expect to see that this week. They sure as hell didn't do it. So, yeah, Derrick Henry and the Titans, it's not going to get any easier here. And for the rest of the way, it's really not going to get easier. Again, a lot of good running teams. The Giants, Commanders, uh, Cowboys... All those teams, playoff teams right now, mm -hmm. as we speak, by the way, all of them at least solid or effective against the Eagles when it comes to the run game. So, yeah, they got to they figure that stuff out. And at, that, at some point, it just has to be Gannon doing something else. You could say it's the talent and whatever, but at some point, if your talent is constantly getting gashed, then what do you do to try something else with the talent to shake it up? Like, you got to... So, I, I think he's got a philosophy and he's not willing to get off of it and something's got to change. Yeah, and... Uh I don't know. I, I just, I can't, I can't figure it out. I'm kind of like almost tired of overanalyzing. This is what it is. or That's what it is. And it's just, this is how the team was designed. You know, like you're hopefully going to be up enough where you don't have to deal with this stuff all the time. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, the, the offense hasn't really provided that. <laughs> It's just it's 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 done some really dumb things at inopportune times. That AJ Brown fumble, it's not on them, you know. And I would even say the special teams in this game twice had hurt them with field position, so that didn't make their lives that much easier. On top of that, it's, it's I just just want to say again, I think it's easy to point at you know the coaching staff and and all what the defense is doing, but can all things considered, including the injury to your starting safety, your ball hawk, all that stuff. I think it was okay. Not great. He made some huge mistakes. He should get killed for that. Overall, I think it's okay. Yeah, I, th I think it's okay. It's Again, it's just you look at this team and, and the ways – if I told you that they had two turnovers, maybe what, four, five, six sacks? I mean, they, they had a couple of sacks mainly in the first half, but still they had, they had a good number of sacks in this game. You'd feel like they won this game, mm -hmm. you know? So you'd feel like it's a good performance overall. I mean, it's crazy they gave up, what, 33 points by the end of this, and, and the touchdown to Love was awful. But, man, for, for backup players at a couple of different spots and for the issues they've got, it's just – this team's so fucking talented, man. I, I just go back to it all the time. Like, it's it's so crazy to think offensively, defensively, however many points they might be giving up, they're still making plays in the right moments. They're good late. A uh, big drive in this one towards the end of the game for the Eagles to go down the field and get a touchdown. Taylor was talking about before that drive. He's like, man, maybe this is like the Cardinals game again. And there it was. Uh, it, it's just good to see that kind of stuff. So for all the stuff, it's just coaching is, is a problem. There's no doubt about it. They need to make tweaks. They need to keep growing. Whether you believe that's happening or not, I guess it's up to you or the, the amount of tape you study or who you want to follow that does it or whatever. But, man, I mean, they, they've got enough talent to play with anybody, beat anybody, even when they make mistakes. They still look really good. They put up 40 points tonight. It's the most they've done all year. Yeah, and, 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 and that's, that's something to celebrate. Man, that's where we keep coming back and disagreeing on that word. And they do. Ha I, you and I think that they have enough talent. I think Taylor even agrees. They have enough talent to go win a Super Bowl. They do. They have the pieces to do it. They could probably use a couple more tweaks, a couple more upgrades here and there. But it's not talent for me. It's just there's something missing. I keep pointing at the coaching staff thinking that's it. And even if it's not, there's still something missing here. Yeah. And I don't know what that thing is, but it's certainly not like... See, I'm, I'm looking at NFL research, which is another incredible stat. Jalen Hurts is the first player since 19, at least 1950 with 150 rushing yards 
the passing and multiple touchdowns. It doesn't happen. So it's like the fourth NFL quarterback to only do that. He's a very special player. I smell it. They smell it. You can you can tell like it it stays on course because of him. But outside of that, I don't know what the other superpower is. Jalen Hurts is a special player, and I want to come back to that in a second. But like, there isn't the other like Miles isn't a special player in terms of how I look at Jalen. No, AJ Brown's probably the next pl- closest guy. Multiple guys on the offensive line. Like, yes, okay. The defense, you can see that I, I can't identify it. Can you? 215-509-5833. If you're watching live on YouTube, I'd love to hear you opinion on this or after in the Discord, bellandthebirdman.com. But, like, I don't know. Do you guys have any other answers outside of, like, this needs to be a little better, that needs to be a little better. Maybe they mix it up just like you were saying. But I don't know what that little thing is to make us feel a little bit better about, like, not having shitty teams score 33 points or only scoring 17 against them. Yeah, I, I think for me, the Eagles are a steakhouse, and they need what every good steakhouse needs, right? It's a little bread and butter. That's just... It, it just makes it go. Yeah, it's it's, it's just the it's the main thing you want. You come I to damn, expect. That was it. so corny, but I respect it so much. Damn I, it, I love it was it. smooth. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like you you if they just figure out what that is, I mean, it's just one of those things, and maybe they don't have it. I don't mm-hmm. know. I thought it was the AJ Brown slant. There was a couple of weeks where that came together and it looked really good, and you're like, all right, this is it. And then they stopped doing it so much. So I I don't I really don't know. Uh, the other side of it is it it's just the running game, and this is it. This is the other thing. It's just they're going to do RPO stuff. You're going to give uh, the the read options. They're going to just give Jalen as many decisions to make in a, in a split second. He's really good at making those, and that's how they're going to get by. It's it's just Jalen Hurts carrying this team or running this team or whatever it's got to be. Is that good enough to win a Super Bowl? This year it is. I don't, I don't think it is. I think this year it is. But it's good enough to see, I mean, uh, to possibly win a Super Bowl, yes. Do I think it's actually going to happen? I, I, I don't think so. I still am feeling really like what we said earlier in the season. This is definitely an NFC championship team. I just, and I, and I am not scared of literally anybody in the NFC. No one, no one at all. Even you you can throw San Francisco. You can throw that in there. Yes. I think they could get beaten by one of those teams, but like at full strength with Dallas Goddard, Jordan Davis, all being here. That's where I still see them. And until we see that one, thing whatever it is again 215-509-5833 feel free to text us anytime i just i don't know what that one thing is taylor you have any ideas on that i I definitely think they're an nfc championship level team um i mean in one game against any of those juggernauts in the afc like the bills or chiefs like why not i think they got a shot they have a shot like those dolphins if they get in there they got a shot Dolphins definitely just 30 points and a half. Yeah. Like, like we've seen Bills have some major hiccups. Uh, wouldn't be the first time Kansas City has had a bad Super Bowl. So I, I don't think it's too far out of reach. But, yeah, as long as everything's run on both sides. Yeah. Um, man, I just uh, – it's probably just me. It's probably just – I just don't see that that great specialist because of – I don't know if it's me constantly watching watching all these other different offenses or I, w- I would say the Eagles have a better defense than probably they get credit for alone. I would still say that that is that is uh, talent wise like that is far and above. I would even feel a little better about going up against the Bills than uh, defensively. I would I would feel better about going up against the Chiefs defensively in that regard. But like. I don't know how you stop the Dolphins' offense with this, and I don't know if they have a bigger punch to like. Can they get into? Can they get into a power a power throwing match? I, you can't. So you've pretty much lost the game if you if you get to there. I think, but that's what I think. I need to see next is like, can they just? Hang throwing the football for one game. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. If you were saying, hey, I want to see a game where Jalen throws it 45 yards like he did at the start of last season, but like he's actually completing passes this time <laughs> right, and, they're, right. and they're winning games. Yeah, I, I can understand that because that's the one thing that we talked, we might have hit on this a little bit earlier this week that's like, it's just not there. You know, for, for whatever reason, the, the classic like Drew Brees, slice and dice, Tom Brady, slice and dice, five yards, seven yards, 15 yards, seven yards, three yards, like just constant throwing the ball really quickly, which he can do. Uh, it's not there. So, yeah, but but for me, they did get 40 points here. So they did. You yeah. scored 40 
uh, uh, that's going to win 95% of football games, 98% of games. So, like, 40 points is great. They had 38 against Detroit the first week. They had 35 against Pittsburgh. They've been in the high 20s, like, constantly. So, um, yeah, they're not going to get there th- passing the ball right now, but they can run it and make this happen. I just – and it, it was – it seems like it was totally the right decision, uh, speaking of process results, whatever, with the third and seven to Kenny – you get it down to fourth and three. You kick the field goal. Apparently, Jake Elliott had been hitting uh, those in warm-ups all night. The wind was with him in there. So you make it a two-score game against Jordan Love. It's no problem. But, like, how many times are you going to be able to get away with that? I know it's the opponent in front of you, and it's probably what's going to work. But, like, third and seven to fourth and three to a 57-yard field goal? Like, I just, I don't know. That's why Jake Elliott's one of the best in the game, too, by the way, despite all the – some of the, some of the people might have even been saying he had an ankle injury that had been leading to, you know, some of those getting pushed left and right or whatever it was. I just – I think that call was absurd to me. <laughs> like, I'm still going to be against it even though it seems like it was the right call. I hate the fact that you're just going to go, you know what, well, we're going to run it on third and seven here and take the field goal 57 yards. That is some – just don't lose the game call, type of calling bullshit. Yeah, me. I mean they were up a they were up a touchdown. There was what like a minute left at that point. So yeah, I I don't mind it. Normally I'm like go for the love <laughs> of God go. But you know it's whatever. It was Jordan Love. I it, but I also spent the whole fourth quarter being like woo. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna be great. Oh yeah, I was on cloud nine for really no reason whatsoever. Yeah, I, I just felt incredibly zeros. calm, and you're sitting here like I can't even sit. This is, <laughs> I'm so anxious. Like I just so yeah, I, I felt fine about it. It wasn't ideal, but like they he hit it, and I thought he would. I mean, the the Packers majority of their, game, of their games are one score games. Is that right? Yeah, interesting. I mean, besides some a stinker against uh, Minnesota, uh, Buffalo was ten, and uh, Titans was ten. So it's uh, like it, it, maybe they're just better than we thought too. It's it's possible. Yeah, it's always you know. I mean, uh, they were really uh, uh, extraordinary one uh, run last year. Devontae Adams. You know, we all we all know that story, and it's it's a shell of itself. They have no wide receivers. Um, could be could be just that. I just you know, it it seems it's always going to seem like ah, I don't do that when the game is more in hand, and that's pretty much you, what you were saying during the live stream there too. Is just like yeah, it's already a two score game. It's going to be a two score game again. Um, I just feel like this team plays with fire a lot of the time when they don't need to. That's all. Like it's just like, ah, go dominate, go score, and. Again, looking ahead to to next week, uh, already coming out, they're a six-point favorite at home against the Tennessee Titans, who definitely struggled against the Bills uh, today. Um, I would say as much as uh, Derrick Henry uh, will scare the ever-living crap out of me, they'll probably find a way to win that one, uh, too. And then we'll be right back here next week at 11-1 going like, I don't know what it is. What is it about this team that just keeps fucking winning? Uh, Because it's not bucking the trend of analytics or our eyes or anything. Like, it's doing all the right things. It just doesn't seem like, you know, this is only the fifth time uh, I think the Eagles have been 10 and 1, period. Uh, And to me, it just doesn't uh, quite stack up to uh, uh, all the rest of those teams uh, yet here. But, I mean, when you're 20 yards short of of an all time uh, NFL rushing uh, record and. Uh, you're doing all these things, and we'll get to Jalen Hurts in one second or two. I just, what do you think, immediate feeling, Titans next week? Yeah, that team sucks. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry. I, like, their matchup is terrible against the Eagles. I get the Derrick Henry thing, but who's catching a pass against this secondary? Who? Man. That's it. Uh, yeah, Traylon I, Burks I love, is not... I love Traylon Burks, and he went off for like 120 yards the other day. Not effective today but outside of a... Look, if he's got Darius Slay and Bradbury on him all day, good luck. Yeah. I just... I don't see them completing a lot of passes. I don't see them throwing for, you know, like Jalen threw 153 yards or something like that today. I, like, that's what it's going to be for Tennessee. I mean, they're, they're really going to need Derrick Henry, and I've said this the last couple of weeks, and it's really true. You're going to need the running back to go for 200 yards if you're going to have a shot. And uh, that's because you're draining the clock... You, you're just keeping everything moving. You've probably scored a couple of times, and it's a low game. So, like, that's that's the only way. I just, if Gannon has any sense about him, which I, I know is a massive leap, I would just put eight in the box basically the whole fucking game and just go, like, you know what, do something is, about it. Is there a Gannon supporter out there that, like, we just can't find? No. <laughs> like, is Anna, this- I've seen some analytics guys. Okay. Uh, like, okay, Philadelphia 
person. Fan. Yeah, well, I, like, I've even had a couple of people in my mentions tonight in and in, in our Discord too, which you can always uh, join at uh, BillandTheBirdman dot com. There's there will be everyone will say I don't care what the analytics say. This defense stinks. It, like it's still leading the league in turnovers, isn't it? Or very close to it? Yeah, they're they're crushing it in turnovers. It's all that really matters. If you're talking about yards and scores and all that, like there's blimps on the radar. There are things he does. That I don't know what the fuck he's thinking sometimes, but uh, I yeah, I, I don't think it's where a major problem lies. And you're right. Like I would love to see him just get ballsy and just go, yeah, eight in the box. Get, you know what? I'll even say bring out N'Kobe Dean for this one. How yeah, about that? Yeah, we got him. How about that? We got him, folks. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I do want to say real quickly um, a thank you to uh, the Gatehouse. Um, as uh, it's, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, that is where all of our home tailgates have been and our watch parties have been. Um, very uh, ballsy of them. Speaking of which, just to say, like, yeah, let's uh, let's come on down here. You guys do the uh, the live stream from here, and um, our second year with our second year with uh, Philly Sports Strips doing the tailgate here. First year doing it with them, and it's just been. An incredible year, and I'm saying this because this is our last. Uh, this is our last one here until the playoffs. So uh, we're going to be back in studio uh, doing uh, doing all this fancy stuff uh, at uh, in media from Sandbox Studios. But um, I do want to tell you that there is a there's an empty Bell and the Birdman cherry soda crush that's in front of me, and there's also a Gatehouse menu that officially has the Bell and the Birdman cherry crush soda. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the very first spot too where you can go get. The authentic Reading Soda Works made Bell and the Birdman soda, and it's literally the only place in Philadelphia that sells it right now. So it's another reason why you need to come down to the gatehouse uh, and get ready for the playoffs because, uh, one, they've made a drink out of our soda already, too. That was during the Phillies playoff run, and it was a surprise to us that they even put it on the menu. So a huge thank you to everyone uh, that is uh, working tonight and all of these Events at the Gatehouse, incredible place to get uh, lunch and dinner and all that stuff. And just wanted to say a big thank you before we got into why Jalen Hurts is amazing here. So, um, dude, what, a, what an incredible uh, home series it's been here at the Gatehouse. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, thinking about what this has been over the last couple of months, uh, months here. I mean, just uh, so many cool things, man. Different barbecuers coming out here as well. Snack time. Philly joining us. It's, it's just gorgeous outside. It's so nice to sit outside. They've got outdoor heaters there. The staff is so friendly. Just like everything about this has been so great. It's been so exciting just to, to do it in the moment and mm -hmm. think about what this is going to continue to be. So, so many great things ahead with the Gatehouse. And uh, Jalen Hurts is a fucking boss. So Yeah, man. Yeah. And that's what I want to close with is just like, no matter what, the, all the, the, the bitching, the, the, the debates that we're going to have uh, probably over the next, uh, man, uh, this next week for sure. And then as we prepare for this playoff and Super Bowl run, just know that Jalen Hurts is special. That uh, 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 so special, in fact, that I don't know if you saw this or not, but Jeff McClain had mentioned today um, that there's already discussions about a $50 million price tag that are being had, and it's going to be somewhere around there. And I, after this and of seeing this season, and you should too after this leap, want to take the risk and pay this kid whatever. I'm happy to be wrong on the team discount, $38.5 or whatever it is, but if you told me that I could have Jalen Hurts locked up for $50 million a year for the next five, six, seven, eight years or whatever it is, I am placing that bet right this second. I, I don't think I've, there is not another Jalen Hurts that exists, man. I've never seen anything like this, not in terms of, you know, whatever the spectacularness that we're looking for in a quarterback, somebody that can just f flick a ball that uh, 70 yards down the field with pinpoint accuracy or whatever it is. It's it's not that type of flash, but I've never seen a smarter quarterback with just incredible running ability who uh, his passing game keeps coming along and along and along. And as long as AJ and these guys are here as a nucleus and a core, Jesus, this is a 10-year quarterback and hopefully more. You know, like I have no 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 issues with this guy being a franchise quarterback or taking that risk and doing so at a $50 million price tag today because that's what it's going to cost you by the time that you come around and be like okay he's worth that money Lamar's going to get paid everybody else is going to get paid this 2020 draft class including Joe Burrow uh, and Tua and all that are going to get paid and probably 50 million dollars is not going to sound 
it's going to sound like Dak Prescott's forty million sounds right now. It's going to be totally worth it, uh, and even if it flops on its face, I'm sure Howie Roseman can get out of it. So that's going to be another big talking point, I would assume, over the next couple of weeks as we're going through all this. A Super Bowl victory almost guarantees that fifty million dollar price tag, but like. I mean, man, they take this team to the NFC Championship game. Is anybody betting an eye on that price tag, Vince Quinn? Fifty million scares the shit out of me. Uh, there's there's a lot of reasons for it. I, I like we talked about forty million and, and whatever. I I think I said like forty to forty two, and I felt okay about that. Yeah. But uh, I man, fifty's a lot. I got to sit on that. 50's, honestly, fifty's. I got to sit on ten million that. more than what the market would have been two years ago. It's a lot of money. It's, it's not that much money. In retrospect, with the, well, the understanding that the cap is more than likely going to double itself over twice over the next two years. And that's that's the biggest thing that makes 50 more tenable. Uh, we could talk about this a little bit more on Tuesday. or Oh, no, we, 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 together, we will. But, I was just saying yeah. if, if that was like going to be, in your mind, an initial horrendous price tag sticker shock for everybody to deal with yeah it has to be on the mind and and jeff mcclain's been leading us this way for a couple of weeks now i mean we talked because he he put damn right god bless you jeff uh (laughs) he he put this out like a month ago and we were like nobody's talking about this like how is nobody and then it happened again which is what happens when you put things behind a paywall i mean it's a complicated business so i don't know but i mean you're talking about paying jalen hurts and then you put it behind the paywall and just then nobody... means jeff mcclain's a real reporter that's right well he is uh so so credit to jeff <laughs> pay jeff mcclain pay jeff that's McClain. right pay Je- pay jeff mcclain everybody okay? that's still credible at the inquire walkout go get a sub stack and we'll follow you there i promise you jeff mcclain come right for the show yeah there uh, you we'll go. help you build there a sub stack done. done and done um so i think there's a, a mountain of what's coming next discussion uh, to come this week make sure you're subscribing right now if you're watching this on youtube give us a thumbs up and uh you know bell and the if you're listening and uh not quite subscribing to everything everything is there we would love to see you in the discord and more importantly we would love to see you buy some of these sweet s i'd rather be watching the birds hats which you can also do free shipping uh throughout uh, the weekend, and we're going to tell our friend Nick over at Forbidden Canvas to hopefully extend that for a little victory Monday using the promo code Aaron Rodgers sucks, right? I uh, hate I, or I hate Aaron Rodgers. I Rogers. hate Aaron Rodgers. It's all one word. I hate Aaron Rodgers, and it was all caps when he sent it to us. So I really <laughs> yes. like that. Um, and uh, we'll never have to see his face again because Jordan Love, congratulations! You're the new <laughs> starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, and Aaron Rodgers. I wish you. Uh, good luck to the San Francisco f- on the 49ers venture eventually, I think, or Jets. the the peyote, ooh, the whatever Jets, he's up to. the peyote, the Humboldt County, uh, you know, weed farm you're going to have and the podcast and God bless you. I'm just, uh, I'm so glad I never have to see your silly face ever again in Philadelphia. The Eagles are 10 and one. I'm not going to try and overthink it anymore. Let's just go enjoy the ride and watch them uh, kick the shit out of the Tennessee Titans, too. Um, uh, For Taylor Cordatis, for Vince Quinn, I'm John Barchard. Bird Brains, we can't thank you enough. We'll see you next Sunday from Sandbox Studios. Okay, bye.